Hi, and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to do inclusive events. Now, when we're talking of inclusive events, what they would mean is that you have an overlap. Okay, let's look at the following. You get to choose numbers between 1 to 10. Event A is the numbers less than 7. So for A, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. Event B is all the odd numbers, which is 1, 3, 5, 7, and 9. Now, if you look at these two graphs, you will notice that certain numbers are the same. 1 is the same, 3 is the same, and 5 is the same. So, when you get things like this, they would probably ask you to draw it in a Venn diagram. So when we're representing the sample space with its events in a Venn diagram, we know, okay, we can see there's an overlap. So we have our two circles and we have our overlap. In our overlap, we have 1, 3, and 5. Now for A, I'm still short of 2, 4, and 6. And for B, I'm short of 7 and 9. But if I look at the entire sample space, I've got 1 to 10. So I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. I don't have 8. I have 9. And then I don't have 10. So what is not in my events still have to come in my sample space. Now once you've drawn it, let us do a few examples. Now remember when I'm asking for n of an event, it is the number of times that an event can take place. It is not the probability. So n, what is the n of a? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What is the n of b? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Now if you were to just total this, already you'll say, hey, but you know, I'm on 11. There's only 10 numbers. Something's not right. Now what we've calculated is only the n. Remember, the formula for probability is the n of the event over the total sample space. So be careful. When I'm asking for n, it's the number. But when I ask for probability, you have to use the entire probability formula. So what is the probability of the event of A? We have 6 over the entire space was 10. So the probability of event A is 6 over 10. What is the probability of B? So we know the probability of B is NB over N of the total. Now again, I'm emphasizing the N is the number of times it's happening. But probability is the entire formula. So we have 5 over 10. So the probability of B happening is 5 over 10. All right, now, what we have is that the probability of A is equal to 6 over 10. We have that the probability of B is equal to 5 over 10. Now, what if I was asking you, what is the probability of A or B? What you'd notice is, I'm asking what is in all of this. Now, if you were to count, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, it would be 8 over 10. What is the probability of A and B? Where are they overlapping? 1, 2, 3. So, it would equal to 3 over 10. Now, when we can look in the picture and when we can just simply see the drawing. It becomes easier. But sometimes we don't have the drawing in front of us. So what they do is we have a formula. The formula states that P of A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A and B. 
Now let's look. You worked out that P of A was 6 over 10. Then you worked out that P of B was 5 over 10. Minus P of A and B is 3 over 10. Which equals to 8 over 10. Which is exactly the same as P of A or B. Now you would probably be asking, okay, so what is the benefit of this? If I can draw the drawing, I can simply count it, isn't it? I can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So why do I need this formula? Sometimes when they give us questions, they're not going to give us how many is overlapping or they're not going to give us the information. Look at this type of question. Now here, they didn't tell us. We, didn't, we don't have a drawing. They are simply giving us values. P of A is this, P of A and B is this, P of A or B, A or B is this, and calculate PB. So what we need to know is, now, we need to know that the formula states P of A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A and B. So we have 6 over 10 plus we don't know minus 3 over 10 and this would equal to 8 over 10. Now if you have to solve for x you bring over the 6 and you bring over the 10 you would have had that x is equal to 8 over 10 minus 6 over 10 plus 3 over 10. Which is 5 over 10. Now that is one of the type of questions that they will give you. Another type of question that they will give you is that you must remember that the P's and the N's are very linked. Look at the next one. Now you see they are not giving you a certain set of numbers. They are telling you a sample space of a selection of chocolates is 15. So in other words there's 15 things in the selection. We don't know what they are but there's 15 pieces of it. Now 10 contains nuts, 8 contains caramel. All the chocolates have nuts or caramel or both. Now we can see there's obviously a both which means there's an overlap. So what you do is you start with the formula. Now look at the formula. You see P A or B is equal to P of A plus P of B minus P of A minus B. Now when we are working with the numbers, if you take your previous equations, what do you notice about their bases? They are all exactly the same. So when we are trying to find how many of the unknowns, we can simply work with the tops, which is basically their numbers. So what we could say is that n of a or b is equal to the n of a plus the n of b minus the n of a minus b because the denominator is unnecessary. It tends to frustrate the children and it tends to frustrate you because you don't know what you're doing now. But if you're just working with numbers, now I know n, a or b. They're telling me that all of them contain nuts or caramel or both, which means that all of these answers are in the sample space. So this is going to be 15. Then they tell me the n of a is 10. They tell me the n of b is 8. So I'm seeing what do I have? I'm seeing what do I have? What do I have? Then I have an unknown because I don't know how many are overlapping. Now if you take the 10, let's take the x across. x would equal to 10 plus 8 which is 18 minus 15 which is equal to 3. So how many overlap? 3 which means that 3 have both nuts and caramel. Do you understand? If you were to draw a sample space, there is definitely an overlap. In the overlap we have 3. Now if I have already got 3 in A, then I only have 7 others. Do you understand? We only have 10. So A must only have 10. This is a very common mistake. Pupils put the 3 in the center and then they go and put the 10 under A. But A 
is already inclusive of that 3. Then B, we have 3, so outside we have 5. So if I ask you, what is the probability of A only? So only A means it's 10 over 15. The probability of B is going to be 8 over 15. The probability of A and B is going to equal to 3 over 15. And the probability of A or B is going to equal to 15 over 15 because there is no outside space. So you must be able to understand this formula. This formula is for inclusive, which means we are talking of when they are overlapping. Thank you for watching.